Hello, everybody. Hey, John Fenn here, Church Without Walls International and uh, cwowi.org. I hope you will visit our website. That's where you can find out uh, information about uh, House Church. We are a House Church Network. I'm going to adjust this camera a little bit. House Church Network. Uh, and that means we meet in homes. That means we rotate most con as often as we can, rotate who leads, rotate who who hosts, and doing it in the biblical pattern. But cwowi.org, you can visit our website. Sign up there for my weekly thoughts. Follow, follow the instructions on that. The weekly thoughts are a, a weekly teaching. comes out every Friday and by email. And it's in those, in the weekly thoughts, in the monthly e-newsletter that I share uh, where our meetings are, our Zoom web meetings, our conferences, uh, prophetic words, things of that nature, along with teaching. So anyway, let's, uh, um, I encourage you to go there. Today I'm talking about, and we're all about the discipleship process. So this is an event that happened to me, a visitation with the Lord that happened in 1999, about a year and a half before the Lord appeared to me and started talking to me about doing house church. And so what he was, what I recognize is he was laying the groundwork. He was laying a foundation for me of understanding. He was building layer upon layer, uh, you know, looking at uh, 18 months later when he appeared to me. So I'd have some things that I would understand ahead of time, even though I didn't know it at the time. So in 1999, I was on staff at a large mega church, had a visible position there. And it was a Wednesday night service with a, a, a back in 1999, a, a well-known worship leader, uh, band uh, had some some songs, hit songs, etc. In the Christian uh, stream of things, and he and the pastor gave him the Wednesday night service. Now, at that time, the church didn't have its own auditorium, so what it would do, it would take the school's basketball court and it would cover it over with with carpet, and then it would uh, set the platform on one sideline where the pulpit and the band played and everything else, and then on the opposite wall, on the opposite sideline, was a portable sound booth that was on wheels where three or four people could get there. They'd move it into position, and then you walk up two or three, four stairs, kind of a little ladder, and so that the sound people could be, you know, eight or ten feet above the, uh, above the ground so that they could see directly to the platform. Now, they put the chairs out in an amphitheater in front of the uh, platform uh, where the pulpit was, maybe 1,200, 1,500 chairs that night. I think it was about 1,500 because of the, the size expected. And uh, and so I, I was taking our youngest son, Brian, there, and he was 14 at the time. And I was standing against the back wall next to the sound booth and just a few feet away from it, you know, but not right up next to it, but a few feet away from it. It was to my left. And uh, I, I wanted to go get a hamburger. That, that's basically what I was doing. I would worked hard all day, picked up my family there on a Wednesday night. I thought I'll wait about a half an hour till they get going and then I'll run off and I'll go grab a hamburger. And uh, what happened instead was in the first 30 minutes when they began, uh, it was the typical songs, what I call horizontal songs. That's all about me, all about what a, what a worm I was, what a wretch I was, how unsaved I was and how Jesus saved me. Now I can run through a troop, leap over a wall. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, spin around. All those different things that are that are horizontal. They're all about me. They're earth related and, and my past related and, and stuff like that. They're not really about the Lord other than what he did in me. But you know how it is in church. You get three or four of those songs and then finally it starts turning vertical and the attention goes to the Father and the attention goes to the Lord Jesus. And it's and, and you leave off you know all the other horizontal things about earthly life and what we were saved from and you just focus on the Lord itself, himself. You know, just like it says in the book of Revelation where the elders threw down their crowns and the cherubs before him said, holy, holy, holy are you, Lord God Almighty. You know, there's nothing about them in it. It's all about him. And so and so in this in this um, concert, that's what had happened. They were 25, 30 minutes into it, and, and, and the worship had now gone vertical. And I thought, great, this is going to be my break to leave. And my eyes are wide open. I'm seeing, I'm hearing everything. But I, I turn to my left, and I see Jesus walking around the sound booth. And he comes over and stands by me, and he says, I want to teach you about worship. And, you know, I'm, I'm as surprised <laughs> as can be. I'm standing back there. My eyes are wide open, but I see the Lord. And uh, to, to make a, to condense this as best as I can, I'm going to cut to a couple of things that happened. One of them was, he, he pointed to a section, and he said, you see, he said, there are people here who came tonight to be delivered from drugs and addiction. And they came expecting a touch from me. And he said, I'm calling for a guitar solo. And he said, the anointing on, on that will drive those demons out and heal those people, deliver those people. And about 15, 30 seconds later, the, the leader's name's Daryl, and, and he, um, 
he, he turned to the guitar, to his lead guitar, and gave him a, a solo. And what I saw in the spirit, you know, I'm seeing the Lord, I'm seeing the natural realm, but I see fire coming from the strings of this guitar. And it's on a low arch over the tops of the congregation to this section. And it's fire that's going, and it's and it's hitting these people, and they're in the midst of worship. Like I said, at this point, it's vertical worship. But what happens is there are demons that I suddenly see, and they've got their hands around these people's uh, uh, brains, their minds like this, and they're being stretched out as the the fire of the Lord. And it, it it when it hit them, it acted like fire, but also acted like water, just kind of splashing and and filling, and yet at the same time, it's like fire. So I I I, I took that to mean the fire of God and driving those demons out but but for the people it was soothing it was water it was it was rest and refreshment and and those demons they just began stretching they were like 20 30 40 50 60 feet long you know like like me in meters it'd be like three four five ten meters just stretching out even 20 meters and their fingers grew very long as they were screaming and trying to hold on to these people to their brains and finally they snapped just like a rubber band and went shoo, off into the darkness uh, remember, the demons are bound to chains of darkness. They are bound to the darkness. They seek people so that they can get a little relief, get a little manifestation in the natural realm. But they are they are bound to. They are in chains of darkness. They the darkness is the chain uh, that they are bound with. They can't come into the light. They can't come into this realm unless they find somebody who's willing to have them. And anyway, and so and so the Lord uh, a little bit later he said, "You see this section over here pointing to another section." He said, "He said there are people in here contemplating suicide. They're in depression." and despondency and, and thoughts of killing themselves, thoughts of suicide. He said, I'm calling for a drum solo uh, and that will deliver them. And, you know, in my mind, I'm going like, okay, and I'm thinking, okay, first, first Samuel chapter 16, and about from verses 14 through 23, it, in verse 23 in particular, I remember it says that, that David, as he played his stringed instrument, that, that the demons or the demonic oppression that King Saul was under left him while David was playing with his, his lyre, his harp, his forerunner of the guitar. And so I knew there was a scriptural basis for this, and uh, and in the and in the drums, the Lord started talking a little bit about about uh, the drums being very very primal, very um, my word, not his, uh, very much like the heartbeat, very much to the core. And He started talking about the core of who we are, the core of what we think about ourselves. Why are we here? Uh, regret and and everything over the past, and it, and that's why the drums were so effective with depression and despondency and thoughts of suicide. It's the core of why we're here and who we are and, and and should is my life worth anything and sure enough the drums and it was the same thing the music came out from the drums of fire and of fire and water and and the people were delivered it was the same same thing but i want to i want to fast forward a little bit to to the worship when the worship turned vertical i saw a column of fire that was much like a tree uh and the way a tree you know spreads out along the ground uh as it gets to its base the base is wider so it was like that, but it was a it was fire over the whole congregation. Then it went vertically like a tree trunk, and if you've seen Greek columns or Roman columns on a courthouse, or maybe you like the Parthenon or the Pantheon or something like that, whether in Athens or in Rome or whatever the case is, a, a classical Greek uh, structure. It's got these little flutes, you know, these indentations, these curved things around the around the the column. Imagine that, except it's fire. Each of those fluted areas, it's, it's just column of fire going up. And it expanded and contracted with the worship. And then the, the leader did something that was very unique. And, and the Lord turned to me. He said, now watch. He said, he's going to make the, the congregation, he's going to turn the congregation uh, worship into an instrument of percussion. And a few seconds later, what he did was everyone was singing in tongues. Everyone is worshiping. And somehow while people were still in that worshipful uh, tongues and just worshiping the Lord, he calmed, he, 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 the band music stopped and he told the people, he said, now I want you to be, begin clapping. Not applause, but I want you to begin clapping. And at first it was a little sporadic, you know, you got 1,500 people, but they gradually, they melded into a all in unity of just clapping. And there wasn't a beat set by the drums or anything. The, the instruments were silent and the people were singing in tongues and worshiping and calling out at the tops of their lungs and just worshiping, but they were using their hands as well. And it just went up in this column of fire. And then gradually he added in a guitar guitar and then a second guitar and then finally the drums and and what and the lesson that I learned from that is that the the band followed the worship of the congregation it wasn't the other way around like you see today in churches it was actually the congregation was leading the worship and the band only responded to the to the flow the ebb and flow of the worship in the congregation and that was the main thing that I that I got out of that 
And because I see it in house church, because house church is not a miniature of the auditorium. And uh, when you're talking about, you know, a handful of people in a living room, the worship has to come from you. And so if you have any a CD or MP3 or Bluetooth player or, or somebody's got a guitar or something like that, it, it, whatever you've got from that, it follows the worship in the heart of the people, not the other way around. But, but at the same time, as it flowed, there was this give and take between the congregation and the band where the, the band would take the lead and the congregation would follow and then the, the band would calm down and then the congregation would take the lead. And it was a beautiful mix of worship and this fire and it was you could hear the flames just roaring and going up to the Father God and, and, and the Lord's sitting right there and he's watching this and his, at one point his eyes were closed and he was just taking it in. I was just looking past you know his, the right side left side of his face there right past him and 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 then suddenly this is what happened the, a, a staff member of the church runs up onto the platform and says oh isn't that wonderful let's let's give them all a hand uh now it's time to receive the tithes and offerings and and that column of fire just went like that and disappeared and he went on and 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 the lord turned to me and he said this sort of thing, this kind of thing happens often in my churches. And he said, they'll never again get to this depth, to this place of worship. And he said, and he paused to let me take that in. It was like, okay, the worship was over. That was it. It was just ended so abruptly. How many times have you been in a congregational setting where it's like the worship is going and flowing and just when it seems to get going, somebody comes up and says, okay, time to receive the offering, time for announcements. And, and they have no clue what the Holy Spirit is doing. And so... And so what happened was after the Lord said that, and then he turned, and he was turned to me and he said, and worse yet, he said, I'm leaving. And with that, he turned and he went one step, two step, and then halfway through his third step, he disappeared. And, and what happened was that the, they took what, 25, 30 minutes or more uh, to, to receive the offering. And during that time, most of the congregation got up and left. And uh, he was saying, in fact, he's trying, he said, hey, you know, they're coming back for another set. They're coming back here to finish up. And they did come back after that for about 25, 30 minutes. But they, they were playing to about 40% of the congregation, you know, at, at the most 50%. I don't even think it was that. Um, it, you know, you break that. It's like the Lord can't do anything else. It's in the true worship that he inhabits our, our praises and stuff. So anyway, that was the takeaway. What I've learned in house church is, is to follow that in our meetings, in our, in our gatherings, in our conferences, it's the same thing. We'll have, we'll have someone lead worship, but it really, as, as it gets going and the people start worshiping, then the, the instruments and the worshipers start following the lead of the congregation for true worship comes from the people, not from a, from the band. And so there's this beautiful give and take. So anyway, I uh, felt led to share that as I felt led here the last couple of weeks to share uh, different visitations. I've shared it before in this space, but perhaps uh, the Lord wanted it again for a reason. Um, but I hope it's been a blessing to you. Take away from that is, is to find a place of true worship in your heart. Because I've been in meetings where I'll tell the people, I'll say, okay, let's, let's spend some time, let's worship the Lord. And people look at you like, you know, like a new calf at a, or a, a young calf at a new gate. You know, they sat there and bat their eyes. And I know those people aren't worshipers. They don't have worship. They, they may go to church and they say they quote unquote worship, but all they're doing is following a band or following a somebody who says, we're going to sing this song now. Because I've been there. I've been in, in house churches. I've been in, in um, conferences and a meeting. They'll say, let's worship the Lord. And I'll immediately go vertical and, and start worshiping the Lord and, and worshiping in tongues and, and English and just, just worshiping the Lord. And, and half the people are just sitting there going, hmm, you know, kind of twiddling their thumbs around. It's like, no, no, folks, you need to develop worship in your own heart. And and that's what we see in house church. We, we see that, fortunately, a lot. The, the worship, even if there's no CD, no MP3 player, we'll just sit there and we'll worship and we'll pray. And it comes from the heart. Develop that. Cultivate that. All right. Enough for today. God bless you. This is uh, John Fan, C-W-O-W-I.org. Hope you'll visit our website. And uh, you can see this also on Facebook. And I have other teachings that I'm going to do, in fact, later today, as a matter of fact, about house church. And look for that heading, house church with a semicolon or a colon, and then a subject line. So you can find that on this channel as well. All right, God bless. Talk to you later.